Good evening. My name is Amanda Droll, and I am the Manager of Strategic Partnerships at Sesame Workshop and proud alumna of Mercy College Class of 2016 and a member of Mercy's Alumni Council. I am delighted to welcome you to the 2022 Alumni of Distinction Awards reception. I know it's been a challenging time, but I am so happy that we are able to hold this event virtually to honor five of my fellow alumni and raise important scholarship dollars for Mercy students. For their outstanding leadership in their fields, tonight we honor Curtis Archer, class of 1979, Anika Bell, class of 2017 and 2019, Jacqueline Casignol, class of 2009, 2010, and 2011, Justin Garish, class of 2006, and Melissa Meza Malconian, class of 2005. On behalf of Mercy College, thank you for your commitment to working diligently to serve your communities. In addition to the awards this evening, we are honored to induct you into Mercy's Alumni Hall of Fame, Class of 2022. You join a distinguished group of alumni, including Dr. Rosa Gonzalez, Class of 1969, Lori Olivia Smittle, Class of 1981, George Longworth, Class of 1993, and many more. Tonight is about recognizing Mercy's amazing alumni and raising funds for Mercy students, future Mercy alumni. Tonight, your contributions will support the Mercy College Legacy Scholarship, a fund that helps children and grandchildren of Mercy alumni attend the college. Legacy is strong at Mercy. For many students and alumni, Mercy is a family school with parents, aunts, uncles, and siblings having also attended. Mercy is proud to support families and their future generations. So here's how you can make a difference. There are a few ways that you can give. You can text your donation, just text Mercy Alum to 41444 or click the donate button on the webpage right below me. If you would like to make a gift over the phone, please email events at mercy.edu and someone will call you back shortly. Students depend on the support from alumni like you to continue their education. Your gifts of $25, $50, $100, $250, $500, and more all go directly to support our students. This gives them the chance to further their growth and give back to their communities. Your gift of any level will help our students continue to succeed. Remember, 100% of your contribution goes to student scholarships, which is why we're asking 100% of you to make a gift tonight. No amount is too big, no amount is too small. Every dollar makes a difference. It is now my pleasure to introduce Mercy President Tim Hall. Thank you, Amanda, and thank you all for joining us this evening. I'm delighted to be here to help honor our alumni of distinction honorees, Curtis, Anika, Jacqueline, Justin, and Melissa, all distinguished alumni who are leaders in their fields and citizens committed to improving their communities. They are five of the more than 70,000 Mercy alumni who are a dynamic part of the Mercy family. We're thankful to have alumni who remain engaged with our community, returning to campus to speak with current students, helping to provide internship opportunities through their employers, and serving as mentors to our students. In fact, I'm proud to tell you that eight alumni sit on the college's board of trustees. 20 alumni volunteer and serve on the Alumni Advisory Council, and over 200 alumni are employed at Mercy. During the last two years of this pandemic, the Mercy community, its faculty, staff, students, alumni, friends, and donors came together to support each other and our communities. There are countless stories of members of Mercy College who were and continue to be on the front lines of the pandemic 
as healthcare heroes, educators, service providers, I'm forever grateful for their selflessness. Despite all the challenges that we've faced the last two years, we've had a successful fall term. We were able to hold outdoor events, such as our annual Founders Day Festival, the Trustees Scholarship Cocktail Reception, alumni events, including reunions, open houses for prospective students, and several on-campus events for current students. The spring semester is already off to a great start, and students are excited to continue with their studies. Earlier this year, Mercy College launched Certify by Mercy College, a division of workforce credentialing and community impact. This was created to meet the expanding need to effectively prepare students of all ages to fill the skills gaps in labor markets of today and the unknown jobs of tomorrow. This division will be focused on shorter term certificates for those seeking preparation in very specific workforce needs whether hard skills like cybersecurity, healthcare, software coding, or soft skills like executive leadership or conflict resolution. This is an opportunity to learn additional skills and certificates to advance students' careers and fill open jobs within our region. Tonight's event is about recognizing our alumni who live the Mercy mission and are committed to making a difference in their communities. We're also here to help raise money for the Mercy Alumni Legacy Scholarship. This scholarship provides support for eligible children and grandchildren of Mercy alumni. Our alumni understand and value the opportunities offered to them while they were students, and we strive to help make those same opportunities available for their children and their grandchildren. With your support tonight, you can help ensure these legacies continue for years to come. Thank you all again for being here and for your support of Mercy College. It's now my pleasure to introduce Marcus Payne, who will introduce our first honoree. Thank you, President Hall. Good evening. My name is Marcus Payne. I'm a proud Mercy alumnus from the class of 2009 and a 2019 Alumni Achievement honoree. I am also the Associate Director of Public Relations and Community Outreach here at Mercy. Welcome to the 2022 Alumni of Distinction Awards. It is my pleasure to introduce tonight's first honoree, Mr. Curtis Archer. Throughout Curtis's career, he has demonstrated a spirit of service that has protected the cultural integrity of his community. A graduate of the class of 1979, he has exemplified the best of Mercy College throughout his career, with his work in serving underserved communities and excellence in the field of economic development. He began his career at Small Business Services in New York City, where he applied his Mercy degree in sociology and political science. As a result of his hard work, Curtis served in various community development roles in the Bronx, Manhattan, and even in Queens. Since 2006, Curtis has served as the president of the Harlem Community Development Corporation. His career of community-centered economic development is the embodiment of the Mercy College mission to provide high-quality services to the underserved. Please join me in congratulating the 2022 Alumni Distinction Award recipient and 2022 inductee into the Alumni Hall of Fame, Mr. Curtis Archer. Let's go, round of applause. You deserve it, big guy. Hello and good evening. My name is Curtis Archer, and I'm the president of Harlem Community Development Corporation. But I'm also a proud graduate of Mercy College, the class of 1979. Therefore, I am deeply honored and humbled to be presented with Mercy College's Alumni of Distinction Award for 2022. I want to also congratulate my fellow awardees for this great honor. I wanna give a big thanks to President Tim Hall and the entire board of trustees at Mercy College. In addition, a special thank you to Marcus Payne for submitting my name in nomination for this great honor. Scorpio Rogers for becoming a fast friend and advisor about good sci-fi. Alexis McGrath, Stephanie Bloom and Michael 
the video guy for holding my hand during this process and making my video message possible. Uh, lastly, Leah Noonan, for, who initially reached out to me as a Mercy alum and graciously even arranged an impressive tour of Mercy's mid-Manhattan campus. President Hall, you have truly assembled an A-team. It's great to reminisce about my time at Mercy after 43 years. I remember my days there having experienced a mixture of exhilaration and a sense of exploration because as a shy kid from the Morris Senior section of the Bronx, I had never seen or experienced such lush green and open spaces when I first visited Mercy's Dobbs Ferry campus. Wow. My experience at Mercy and certainly some of the courses I took instilled in me the fight against inequality and for equal opportunity and equal treatment for all people, and most definitely an end to violence and discrimination against women and people of color. This continues to be one of the most important social issues and movements of our time, and Mercy College contributed to opening my eyes. As you know from my bio, I've been engaged with community economic development work since 1989. I used to marvel at the incredible work that is often done behind the scenes by community development professionals to stimulate job creation and economic development in New York City and underserved communities by offering technical assistance and other services to entrepreneurs from communities like mine, uh, Harlem, Northern Manhattan, and the Bronx. I often joke that in my chosen profession of community development or public service, you will never get rich. That's not the point. But most certainly you can live comfortably and the point is to enjoy what you do and to provide a top level of service to others without the expectation of recognition. I just enjoy seeing the entrepreneurs and the small business owners who I work with provided with the opportunity to realize their vision of starting and growing a business and the ability of them to provide goods and services in their communities and even potentially offering employment opportunities to others. It's truly a win-win. As I look back at my years at Mercy College, I, I must confess that the education I received there, both within and outside the classroom, prepared me to contribute to an increasingly advanced and interconnected society. And for that, I will always be grateful to Mercy College in New York City. Let me say in closing that I look forward to the day that the pandemic is a distant memory so that I can shake all of your hands and I, we can all raise a glass in person. Once again, thank you, Mercy College, for this extraordinary honor. Thank you, guys. Hello, I'm Viviana DeCohen, a proud Marine Corps veteran and a double alumna of Mercy College, graduating in 2016 and 2018 with my master's. I had the pleasure of previously working in Mercy's PAC program with Mercy Student Veterans, and I'm now director of the New York State Division of Veteran Services. It is my pleasure to introduce one of tonight's honorees, Anika Bell, also a veteran and a double alumni who earned her undergraduate degree in 2018 and her master's in 2019. Anika has had a long road from being in need of support from her community as a high school dropout and single mother of two to being a person who supports her neighbors that have had hard times. She has contributed significantly to the city of Mount Vernon by donating her time and talent to transform the Veterans Resource Closet located at the Mount Vernon City Hall. She has also volunteered her time by painting those walls and the design of an American flag, installing shelves and racks, changing the carpet, drapes, and installing furniture for what is now known as Kristen's Closet. As a result of this volunteering, Anika has been awarded the Volunteer New York Transformation Award. She continues to offer opportunities for employment to fellow veterans within her businesses 
and serves as a spokesperson on veterans platforms and programs in New York State where she's called upon to perform the national anthem or speak on women veterans issues. She was also honored with the Women Veterans Peace Garden at the Greenberg Library in Elmsford, New York through her work with the Barbara Giordano Foundation, which serves women veterans around the nation. Please join me in congratulating 2022 Alumni of Distinction Award recipient and 2022 inductee into the Alumni Hall of Fame, Anika Bell. Thank you so much, Viviana, also known as Mama V, for that amazing introduction. You have been such an awesome mentor to me, as well as a host of other people, but especially your veteran students. Thank you, Mercy College. I am so honored to receive this award. Being a high school dropout, when I started my college journey back in 1993 with two children, only to drop out and to start again, now married with three children, hasn't been easy to say the least. But I never quit. I kept going. And because of the support that I received while attending Mercy College, I went on to receive not only my bachelor's, but my master's degree. When I first designed the Veterans Resource Closet at City Hall in Mount Vernon, also known as Kristen's Closet, I did it from my heart because I wanted veterans such as myself to have a place to go to receive the necessities without feeling like we were less than. I love giving back to my community as well as mentoring and training the youth. I also love to encourage my men and women to become entrepreneurs in non-traditional jobs. This is why I created Celebrities Quality Painting, my construction company. And my slogan is, where the walls, where your walls are the star of the show. But today I'm the star. And I want to encourage all the men and women out there who felt like they wanted to give up, who felt like they couldn't do it. I want you to know that you can do anything that you put your mind to doing. So tonight or today, <laughs> again, I wanna say thank you to Mercy College for this honor. I am so proud to call Mercy College my home. Thank you. My name is RJ Bradley-Ortiz. I'm a biology major. I'm a senior this year and I am applying to grad school soon in November and then uh, to medical school next summer. I'm so excited to actually get into the lab and physically do experiments and research and being on campus and it's not a ghost town here. There are students walking around. It feels really good to be back. The hardest thing is to choose which research to participate in. They all have such amazing research programs. I was raised in the South Bronx by a single mother um, and she worked really hard so that I can get education and uh, advance beyond like where she was able to get. Getting an education to me is freedom. Um, it means that I can kind of elevate myself out of my circumstances. I'm a returning student. I was originally at Mercy College and then I had to take some time off because of like financial reasons and family things. And so this is like my second chance to like come back and make the most of it. I mostly get loans. I do get the Mercy Aspire grant um, and a couple of scholarships. Um, mostly I do paid research um, through McNair or through C-STEP. Um, I do stuff things like this, like Mavcare. I want to do everything. I want to be involved in everything. I'm RJ Bradley-Ortiz. I am the student government vice president. I want to go to events. I want to go to club meetings. I want to see people in real life that I've like seen only on a screen for like basically two years um, and meet them in person and like discover that they are real people and not little squares on Zoom. It's my last year, so I just want to be as present and involved as possible.
Good evening. My name is RJ Bradley Ortiz. I'm a senior and a biology major graduating this May. Thank you so much for the opportunity to speak this evening. My Mercy story is all about second chances. I'm a non-traditional student continuing my undergraduate degree. I was originally a student at Mercy when a family illness and financial roadblocks prevented me from continuing. I'm back now and immersing myself fully in the Mercy community. I'm the vice president of the Student Government Association and also on the boards of the Association of Latino Professionals for America, the Tri Beta Biological Honor Society, and the Rotaract Club. I'm involved in several other clubs and am a learning fellow as well as a teaching assistant. Here at Mercy, I strive to be an integral part of building a lasting student government that will be the bridge between staff and the students to ensure that um, every, the voice of every student is heard and appreciated. We have created initiatives that begin with diversity, equity, and inclusion. My career goals are to be a physician and a medical researcher, and Mercy College has continued to make that dream more and more tangible. From the amazing research opportunities to the constant encouragement from staff and faculty, I'm finally in a place where accomplishing these lifelong goals seems real. Mercy College has been a symbol of what's possible for students like me. As a McNair scholar, C-STEP student, and a STEM scholar and biology student, I have been given many opportunities in leadership, networking, and future studies. Through scholarships, grants, research stipends, and tuition remission, Mercy College has eased the financial burden of succeeding in higher education. I am now and will always be proud to call myself a maverick. Thanks to supporters like you, I'm fulfilling my dreams and looking forward to being a Mercy alumna this year. Congratulations to tonight's honorees. You are all shining examples of success for Mercy students. It is my pleasure to introduce Professor Jeffrey Hudson, who will introduce our next honoree. My name is Jeffrey Hudson. I am an adjunct instructor of psychology in the School of Social and Behavioral Sciences. It is my pleasure to introduce our next honoree this evening an accomplished nursing administrator, educator, and professor, Jacqueline Casagno, received a Bachelor's of Science degree in nursing in 2009, a Master's of Science degree in nursing administration in 2010, a post-master's degree certificate in nursing education from Mercy College in 2011. She is currently a PhD candidate in nursing at Pace University. She is the founder and president of Worldwide Community First Responders, Incorporated, WCFR, which she founded in response to the, to the 2010 Haiti earthquake. This organization provides health education, first aid, and disaster preparedness training. She has presented locally, nationally, and internationally at nursing conferences about WCFR and its collaboration with other nonprofit organizations to improve global health outcomes. She is also a founding member and past vice president of the Greater Nanuet Chamber of Commerce a Rockland Community Emergency Responsive Team member, a Leadership Rockland member, a Haitian American Nursing Association member, and a Sigma Theta Tau International Honor Society of Nursing member. Please join me in congratulating the 2022 Alumni of Distinction Award recipient and the 2022 inductee into the Alumni Hall of Fame, Jackie Sagno. Thank you to Mercy College for selecting me to be inducted in your Alumni Hall of Fame and receive the Alumni of Distinction Award. Congratulations to all of the Mercy College alumni who are being honored this evening. Your individual contributions, commitment, sacrifices, and enthusiasm when collectively combined make a significant difference. You're all leaders, highly deserving of all the recognition you have received. I am honored and delighted to accept this award. I'm here today because of the support and guidance of so many Mercy College faculty members. They have profoundly impacted every facet of my life. From my philosophy to my decision to found the nonprofit organization, Worldwide Community for First Responder, Inc. WCFR was created in 2011 with a mission to prevent deaths worldwide through education and training. We have a diverse group of volunteers who provide health education, first aid, and disaster preparedness training 
free of charge. We believe that everyone should know what to do in case of emergency and that nobody should die because they needed first aid and didn't get it. Imagine having a loved one die because no one around knew how to give first aid. In 2011, I joined a group of healthcare professionals in a mission to train the people of Gungwav, Haiti in first aid and first response. During one of my teaching sessions, one of the participants stu stood up and stated, if we knew what to chance right now, fewer people would have died during the earthquake. This statement touched me so deeply that I broke down and cried right there. This was the most meaningful moment of my mission to Haiti. I knew then that I must continue doing more of this type of life-saving work. After this experience, a fire awakened inside me and led me to create WCFR. Over the past 10 years, WCFR initiated over 70 health-related projects in the United States and Haiti to empower individuals in their own communities and save lives. I couldn't have done it alone. My family and friends, too long of a list to recite here, are very supportive of me and WCFR. The inspiration has encouraged me to follow my passion, knowing that success will follow. Although WCFR is currently focused in the United States and Haiti, our long-term goal is to cover the entire globe. This is only a beginning. I am proud to be a triple alum of Mercy College 2009, 2010, and 2011, with a Bachelor's of Science degree in nursing, Master of Science degree in nursing administration, and post-master's degree certificate in nursing education. I am currently a PhD candidate in a nursing program at Pace University. Without the support, of Mercy College faculty, none of this would have been possible. I would like to express my heartfelt thank you to Dr. Miriam Ford, Dr. Susan Mosco, and Professor Stephanie Hooper. Special thanks to Professor Jeff Hudson for nominating me for this award. Good evening. I'm Stephen Ward, Associate Professor and Program Director in the Music Production and Recording Arts Program at Mercy College. And I'm Sam Stoff, a 2009 Mercy graduate and now the Music Studio Manager in the program. It is our pleasure to introduce tonight's next honoree, Justin Garish, a graduate from 2006 who is a natural leader in the audio world. Justin is a mixer, producer, and engineer based in Brooklyn, New York. He began his career at the world-renowned Avatar Studios, formerly the Power Station. While at Avatar, he had the opportunity to work alongside some of the industry's leading producers and engineers, including Rich Costi, Butch Vig, David Kahn, Joe Barisi, Joe Ciccarelli, and Russell Evolato. After leaving Avatar, Justin opened his own studio in Brooklyn, and it was geared towards helping indie bands stay within their budgets while achieving the best sonic quality possible. Some of his notable credits include the Grammy award-winning Vampire Weekend album, Modern Vampires of the City, The Strokes, Mark Ronson, Fall Out Boy, John Mayer, Kid Cudi, Harry Connick Jr., Bon Jovi, and more. Since graduating from Mercy, Justin is using his degree doing exactly what he wanted to do. Please join us in congratulating the 2022 Alumni of Distinction Award recipient and the 2022 inductee into the Alumni Hall of Fame, Justin Garish. I'd like to thank Mercy College for this award and uh, especially Steve Ward and Sam Stoff um, and all the other professors that I had while I was at Mercy. Um, Steve Lacerra, Robert Peremsky, uh, Paul Steinman, without their guidance and you know hands-on teaching skills, um, I wouldn't be where I am today. And because of that, you know, the their skills that they transferred to me, I was able to get an internship at a studio in Manhattan, Avatar Studios, which is one of the most prestigious studios in the country. And um, from there, I became 
staff engineer and then also got to work with artists like Vampire Weekend, John Mayer, Muse, uh, Fall Out Boy, the list can go on. But from there, I went freelance, opened my own studio in Brooklyn, where I worked with a lot of various artists and still do, mixing and producing their records. Um, I have also kind of transitioned into the corporate world where I work for Equinox Media, where I am their audio lead. So all things audio that they need done, I am there to assist them. And whether that's setting up um, remote recording for any of their talent or location recordings or in-studio recordings, I handle all that. So again, I'd like to thank Mercy College and all the other recipients that are receiving awards tonight. To the On my way through Waycross I'm feeling mighty low I fell in love with the school because it just was a very relaxed feeling. The teachers were amazing. Everybody was very like uh, one big family. And that's, that's very hard to find. It's mind blowing what you have here. But it's also it's that family thing is what makes college a, a cool thing. How I wrote the song for Rita Franklin, sitting at Atlantic Studios, I learned a lot watching her and how she would say things to the musicians and what she likes and where to put the beat and, and the feel. She was much more than just a great singer. She really knew what she was doing. If you're looking to break into the business, keep working at what you do. My musical experiences with so many different acts, it was amazing. I, I, uh, it was the best part of my life, actually. I'm blown away by the situation here in the studios, but the campus, just walking up to Victory Hall, which wasn't called Victory Hall when I went here, it's just a nice feeling. Oh, this man done a wonderful job at the school. <laughs> Hi, my name is Tracy Teach, and I'm a proud Mercy College alumnus from the class of 2005, and a friend and former classmate of Melissa Mesa Maconian. Melissa received her master's degree in bilingual and special education from Mercy College in 2005. Melissa began her career as a bilingual special education teacher in Inwood with the New York City Department of Education, where she taught students in grades five through eight in both English and Spanish. She then joined a Bronx charter school where she continued to teach before becoming the middle school's assistant principal. After nearly 10 years as an educator, Melissa was inspired to open a unique charter school based on her personal experience and research on student performance in the South Bronx, where needs are acute. She envisioned a bilingual Spanish-English middle school for which I was amazed by her vision and determination to turn her idea into a reality. Melissa has a strong work ethic firmly believes in education, is persistent and passionate. The American Dream School opened in the fall of 2014 with sixth grade and then added a grade each year. Melissa intended her school to serve students and families only through eighth grade, but continued to open a grade per year in response to the demands of parents who didn't want to send their children anywhere else for high school. I happily joined the American Dream School as a history teacher in August 2020 and am constantly amazed at the incredible work taking place. The school has the most positive all-around culture for students and staff I've had the opportunity to be a part of in my educational career. This past June, American Dream graduated its first senior class, nearly every member of which was first generation American and first in their family to attend college. By preparing these students for higher education, convincing them that they belong on college campuses and providing resources to help them succeed once they get there. Melissa and the American Dream School are changing the lifelong trajectories of the students, their families, and the generations that will follow. Melissa embodies Mercy's directive of its graduates to continue learning throughout their lives, to act ethically and responsibly in a changing world. Please join me in congratulating 2022 Alumni of Distinction Award recipient, 2022 Alumni Hall of Fame inductee, Melissa Mesa Maconia. Good evening, fellow inductees and guests. 
I remember moving from Hartford to the Bronx and a few days later having to navigate Fordham Road through Palin Parkway on a bicycle so that I could find my way to 1200 Water Street. This became my main mode of transportation for two years as I earned my first master's degree at Mercy College and I loved every minute of it. I grew up just outside El Paso, Texas. My parents were at the time undocumented immigrants. They understood the importance of education up to a point. College and the investment it required didn't make sense to them. Were it not for a shiny brochure and my ability as a softball player, I would never have gone to college. During my freshman year at my small liberal arts college, I learned that I was Mexican and that I was poor. I nearly dropped out that first semester. I tried, in fact, but my parents insisted that I finish what I started. I found mentorship and a surrogate family in one of my professors and his wife, and I eventually excelled. After college, I began teaching special education in New York City through the New York City Teaching Fellows Program. I discovered that many non-native English speakers were designated for special education simply because their knowledge was in another language. This program led me to Mercy College, where I learned, gained, developed, and discovered. In 2014, we opened the American Dream School as a bilingual school with nearly every class taught in Spanish and English. I chose to open the school in the South Bronx because it was the poorest congressional district in the country as per the 2010 census, and it had a very high concentration of English language learners. This past June, on a beautiful Saturday evening at the Bronx Zoo, we graduated 98% of the members of our first graduating class, and over 90% of them are in college today. Most American Dream School students are the children of essential workers, immigrants, whose formal ed education ends at the primary level. These families have been ground zero for the health and economic impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. To earn a college degree and become the first professional in their family's history will not only mean financial security, but greater control of their and their family's mental and physical health, political voice, greater control of their destiny. Thank you for this humbling honor and this recognition which I accept on behalf of my fellow administrators, the faculty, staff, families, board of trustees, and most importantly, the students at the American Dream School, because if leaving a school has taught me anything, it is that to do so successfully, it takes a village. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Jeremy Gockenbach, and I'm currently a senior here at Mercy College, majoring in marketing and data analytics. After I graduate in May, I plan to return to Mercy to pursue a dual degree, getting my MBA in managerial analytics and an MS in business analytics. Moving from a small town in Pennsylvania and into the backyard of New York City has definitely been a wild experience to say the least. But as I reflect on my Mercy education, not only do I think I made the right choice, I know I made the best choice. When I came to Mercy and started in the Business Honors Program, my peers and I were thrown right into our coursework, taking classes such as financial and managerial accounting, corporate finance, marketing, management, and communications. Not only were we taking core business classes from the start, but we were also being taught by individuals with real world experience. Some have worked for Fortune 500 companies, some have started their own, and some have even worked in the C-suite. All of the professors here at Mercy are exceptional at what they do. And it is clear that they all have one thing in common. They want to help us succeed in the real world. From the first day, all of our professors made it obvious that they want each of us to graduate and they want us to be successful once we do. From the curriculum that they taught, to the one-on-one -on -one conversations they had with each student. Professors here build an amazing relationship with their students. Not only does their knowledge help us succeed in school, but it also helps us succeed in obtaining internships and jobs during school and after graduation. In fact, 
That is exactly how I was able to land an internship my junior year at Con Edison. One day after class, I was having a conversation with one of my professors about my career trajectory. After talking about my interests on data analytics, he mentioned an internship opportunity for Con Edison and said it seemed right up my alley. I met with Mercy's career and professional development team where they helped me edit my resume, formulate my cover letters, and update my LinkedIn profile. But on top of all of that, they helped me prepare for interviews. I knew I would use all the tools they provided me to succeed. And now for the past year, I have been a data analyst co-op for Con Edison, handling all data points associated with failed transformers that come in from all five boroughs of New York City and Westchester County. As I look back on my time at Mercy, all I could think about is growth. Growth as a student and growth as an individual. In addition to my academic success, I also had the privilege to be a part of campus life as an orientation leader. Not only was I able to make a difference for current and potential students by sharing information and my experience about Mercy, I was also able to hone and enhance leadership qualities I never thought I would obtain elsewhere. Mercy College really provides their students with the best opportunities to be successful. It is up to you to take that on. After graduation, I know I will remain connected to Mercy. So if I had to describe my Mercy College experience in four words, it would be home away from home. Congratulations to tonight's honorees and thank you for your support of Mercy. Your support helps students like me achieve my academic and career goals. Now, it is my pleasure to introduce our alumni council, Monique Prinos and Joe Jacob. Good evening, my name is Monique Prinos and I'm chair of the Mercy Alumni Council. I am an alumna of Mercy College, class of 1979, when I received my bachelor's in psychology. I am delighted to be here tonight with one of my fellow council members, Joe Jacob, to celebrate tonight's honorees and raise important scholarship funds. To those who are being recognized for their achievements tonight, congratulations, especially to my classmate, Curtis Archer, from the class of 1979. Thank you all for joining us virtually and for your support of future Mercy College alumni. I'm happy to join you again this year to share my Mercy experience. When I started at Mercy, I was determined to take a certain path in my career. While sitting in an intro to business class, the professor spoke about personnel management, which was the name human resources was called then. And I became curious after researching my path to the 360 turn. The journey has had some bumps along the way, but I am grateful to that professor for opening my eyes to a different career option. This year, I was able to volunteer at the annual Founders Day Festival. I was able to see how happy and engaged our student body is. Mercy is passionate about education. There are more degree programs offered now than when I was a student, but the character of the professors has not wavered. They are still engaged in the success of students. They are patient, encouraging, and will make sure you reach your goal. As an alumna, I was looking for ways to participate at Mercy and give back to the incredible community that helped me. I was introduced to the Mercy Alumni Council and I'm excited to be engaging with fellow alums on ways to build community, how to network and support current students and future Mercy alumni. I'm now going to turn it over to Joe, who will share some of his Mercy story. Thank you, Monique. My name is Joe Jacob. I am the Director of Analytics at Mercy College and a proud alumnus, MBA Class of 2018, and a member of the Mercy College Alumni Council. It was both challenging and rewarding to be able to attend Mercy College's MBA program while working full time and employed at the College of New Rochelle. My wife was also a full-time student at that time. So despite our schedules, we were able to come home after our classes and spend time with our son. 
The agreement with CNR opened another great opportunity for me to move into a role with Mercy and be part of helping transition CNR students and the campuses to Mercy College. As a dedicated employee and Mercy alumnus, I have decided to continue my journey as a Maverick and further my education. I am pursuing an MS in Business Analytics and will graduate this August. Before I turn it back over to Amanda, I want to remind you that there are a few ways you can make a difference. You can text your donation. Just text Mercy Alum to 41444 or click the donate button on the webpage right below me. As a proud member of the council, I want to congratulate all of the honorees on their achievements. Amanda? Thank you, Monique and Joe. It is great to be part of the council and to work with you. If you are a Mercy alum and are interested in getting involved, we'd love to hear from you. I would like to take a moment to once again congratulate tonight's honorees. Curtis, Anika, Jacqueline, Justin, and Melissa. Before we conclude tonight's program, a special thanks to tonight's sponsor. I also want to give you all one more opportunity to give to the Legacy Scholarship Fund by texting Mercy Alum to 41444 or click the donate button on the webpage right below me. Thank you again for joining us and for supporting Mercy College. Enjoy your evening.